It's been a long three days here. I'm sure you guys have some questions, so fire away. John, how much research did you do into Odell Beckham's past, uh, I don't know, issues, if you want to call them that? Were you allowed to actually talk to him, or did you talk to people familiar with him? No, I, th I think what we do is um, – we do our research on, on, on every player that uh, becomes a Cleveland Brown. And with regards to Odell, listen, he's, he's a very passionate, competitive guy who's going to help this football team. Well, what was the, how long did it take to get that trade to come together, John? Well, I mean, you know, we, we always do our preparations on hypotheticals. And, um, we, we always uh, brainstorm and, and try to uh, see if certain scenarios will unfold. But, uh, you know, th this particular trade really didn't transpire until, I think, Tuesday late, uh, early Tuesday evening, late uh, Tuesday afternoon. John, on your new defensive lineman, uh, Richardson and uh, Vernon, in what ways can they become uh, game changers on that defensive line? Well, uh, defensive line, you know, we, you know, we stress the importance of the foundation, and the foundation for a football team is um, offensive defensive line, and you can't have enough talented football players on your team, especially in the defensive line, and, you know, the – you know, having the ability to acquire uh, these types of players will, will help us be a better defense moving forward. John, you're, you're kind of soft-pedaling it a little bit, but you did acquire one of the most exciting players in the league. I mean, how do you feel about adding him to the offense and how important do you think it is for him to be a teammate with Jarvis Landry again? Well, that you know, the um, you can't have enough competitive football players, and we all – understand the magnitude of his ability to play the game football and um, he's a good football player and you can't have enough you know enough weapons around you and and, and you know he, he's a really good asset to have on our football team John, 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 the combine, the combine, at the combine you said you weren't ready to this team wasn't ready to go for it um, the moves you made the last week seemed to send a different message did something change were you just kind of downplaying it when we talked to you at the combine uh, you know, it's we, we lay out certain plans all the time. But at the end of the day, we've been consistent in saying we're going to have, um, you know, we're going to try to create competition in as many positions as we can going into training camp. And I think with the addition of uh, certain players uh, that we acquire, I think uh, we'll be competitive and we'll, you know, we'll begin to try to cr uh, be competitive in the AFC North. How much did the signing of Sheldon Richardson allow you to really – get after the Odell trade later in that afternoon. I, I don't understand your question. Can you say it again? Yeah. How much did, when you signed, when you got Sheldon that, like, Richardson kind of to ready. agree Tuesday morning, how much, it, how much did that really allow you the flexibility to pursue the Odell trade later in the afternoon? In other words, did that move set up your ability to make that trade? Not, no, not necessarily. Um, you know, again, I think Sheldon is a really fine football player, especially from the um, interior part of the line. And I think in today's football, if you can have an interior offense, a defensive lineman apply pressure on the quarterback, um, that's, you know, that's, that's all you can ask for. And that's the way the game's kind of going. John, the timeline of, of the trade – coincides with agreeing the terms with Perryman. Did you intend to have them both on your team? Or did the, when you agreed with Perryman, did, did the trade happen after that? The, uh, the, the trade happened after that. I, like I told you, that, that uh, trade didn't unfold until late afternoon, early evening on Tuesday. Had you been talking to Dave Gettleman before that, though, John? Uh, Dave and I have known each other for 30 years. Uh, we talk about a lot of things. John, can you talk about, um, you know, how much this, the original part of the Zeitler, Olivier, Vernon trade, you know, how much did you get into Odell at that point? I mean, did you come close to doing this all at the same time and just couldn't get it done and put the second half of it off? No, I mean, we, we Dave and I have conversations, but I think, um, you know, th those are individual conversations. 
Meaning, mean, you know what I mean by that, right, Mary Kay? Individual with regards to the, the player that is being traded. Yeah, I was just wondering if you tried to get it done as part of the, uh, you know, the first time around with Zeitler and Olivier and, you know, decided to just go forward with that trade and keep working on the second part. No, you know, Mary Kay, you know me, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm one of those guys who is almost like a compartmentalized thinker, and I do one thing at a time. Hey, John, last year at the owners' meeting, the, you know, the reports out of New York were, were going wild about Odell Beckham Jr. possibly, uh, you know, being a trade candidate, and we talked to you a little bit about it, and you couldn't comment much on it, but you said that, you know, you had breakfast with, with Dave Gettleman there at the owners' meetings, and you know, you point out on NFL Network that Jarvis Landry and Adam Henry are with you in Cleveland and the connection there. So was that seed planted way back then, about a year ago? No, no. I mean, you know, no, it, it wasn't. Again, it was a hypothetical sometimes that um, you can plan for it, but, it all, you know, you can plan for stuff that 99% of the time doesn't transpire. And this, Joe ha this just so happened to be that 1% that, you know, your planning actually played off. <clears throat> Hey, John, how do you think uh, Reddick Kitchens is going to keep all these guys who want the ball happy? You know, the one thing I love about Freddie, Fre Freddie is very direct. He's very straightforward. He's going to set expectations. He's going to hold players accountable. He's going to be the same guy day in and day out. And you know what? Players respect him, and they respect that type of approach. Did you have any oh, conversations – with Landry and Baker Mayfield before making the trade about Odell? I did not. How are Richardson, you talking about what? And, um, Richardson and Vernon, how are they going to uh, affect uh, what uh, you're going to be able to do with Garrett? I, I, again, you, you know, what, what you're attempting to do here is to increase your pass rush, and I think, you know, that, that helps us get a little bit better uh, on the defensive line. And then you combine that with, you know, with Larry and the manual, then you know what? you got a pretty good defensive line, and you can start to develop pretty good pass rush. John, do you think it's a good thing that, that Landry and, and Odell are teammates? I mean, will that help matter at all? Does that matter to you? <laughs> well, I know that they're, they're uh, best of friends. Uh, they're very competitive with each other. Um, you know, I heard Les Miles talk about how those two drive each other and push each other when they were at LSU to compete. Um, and I think it can only help, you know, each other because that competition brings out the best in, the, in any athlete, regardless of the sport. And can you talk about uh, what you see in Baker Mayfield's ability to kind of bring a lot of strong personalities together here, including his? Well, no, I mean, it, and, you know, I think uh, with, with Baker, I mean, he showed – last year, but he can step up to, to, to certain challenges. And again, the, the object of this thing is to surround him with as many good football players as you possibly can. And I, I you know, it seems like uh, Odell and Baker have a relationship formed. I'm not sure where it formed, but it, it, they tell me that they have a relationship and it's a good relationship. So uh, I'm excited to see what the whole bunch can do. Hey John, this is new territory for the Browns, uh, having expectations bestowed upon them. Uh, how do you think uh, Freddie and, and the players themselves are going to be able to manage those? Well, I th you know, expectations, um, you know, I hear a lot about that, but I, I know this, good football teams, they win in the fall. And what we've done is we've added some talent. Now the chemistry part's got to take over with it. And, you know, Again, teams win in the fall. They don't win in March, and that's good teams. And with regards to uh, Freddie, again, Freddie is one of those individuals who I love because he's so straightforward, honest, he's direct. He's going to set expectations high. And, you know, again, there's that accountability level, and he will make players be accountable. And he's the same guy every day. I mean, that's, I, I, that's who he is. John, do you have any desire to move now into the first round again, or could you could you uh, stay where you're at? You, you're all right with that? Well, we'll try to plan for every scenario we, we can, and, and if we deem that there's a player to move up for, uh, that's a hypothetical. You try to see if, if, if you think the player can help you. You go up and do it. If not, maybe, you know, 
you just that's that's the mechanisms that work out. Uh, you got to plan for it, but then you got to execute them on on uh, the day of the draft. Hey John, you've always talked about competing in the AFC North since you arrived. Did the moves that the Pittsburgh made and then the Ravens made did that influence you at all in some of the moves that you made? You know the fact that Antonio Brown left and Le'Veon left and some of the Ravens defensive guys left. Do you think the opening's there right now to go take this division? No, I mean, my, you know, what we attempt to do here is add, again, some good football players to the team, and then let's go compete and let's see how the group can come together as one and go and, and achieve the goals that they set for themselves and the, and the head coach sets for them. But, you know, that, 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 I, that wasn't the real that, – that wasn't the plan. With Pepper's gone, what's, uh, what kind of pressure is there on you to uh... – Get some help uh, on the back end of the defense there. Well, I mean, what you try to do is, again, we're going to have some players. We have some players on our roster that can help us. Uh, again, you know, the work is never done, so you'll try to explore every opportunity and every avenue you can. But then all of a sudden you have competition um, in OTAs and training camp. You can't, again, that's, that's where all that stuff begins to unfold. Would you look at Eric? Uh, would you look John at Eric Berry, John? Uh, I've known Eric Berry for a long time. I think he is a fine, fine person. Um, of course, we're going to do our research, and if we feel that uh, he fits this organization, of course, we'll make some calls to his representatives. Do you have any more idea on uh, any ruling on Kareem Hunt coming closer? No, I haven't uh, heard back from the league, and you know we'll we'll react accordingly once we hear back from the league. But I know I, I do know this with regards to Kareem. Uh, he's been in the building, and I know he has basically really done a nice job of being committed, of doing that work, that you know, so he can be the better best version of himself. So I know he's been diligently working on that. Didn't you expect John, that you... to be resolved by now, John? I'm sorry? Didn't you expect a Kareem Hunt deal to be resolved by now? Well, I mean, you know, I can only I can only act when it, when, it, when it happens, and I can't speak for the league when they're going to do their ruling, and all I can do is wait for them and, and just see what happens. Where are you at with Duke Johnson right now and his status with the team? Duke Johnson's a really, I mean, he's a really good player. He's a very valuable asset um, on this team. John, it's out there that you're shopping Duke Johnson and Emmanuel Agba. Is that correct? You know, got, there's people in the National Football League, the teams, and they call every day about certain players. Right now, those two guys are Cleveland Browns. Okay, and they're both really good football players, but teams call around on a lot of different scenarios all the time. John, how much over the the last two off seasons we've seen you be really aggressive trading as opposed to going after the big names in free agency, but you've acquired them via trade. Is is there an advantage to that as opposed to to trying to get bigger names in free agency? Uh, Not necessarily. It's just uh, it's just another avenue of, of acquiring players. And then we'll explore every opportunity. If we think it helps the Cleveland Browns, uh, you know, in you know, present and in the in the future, you know, we'll we'll try to see if we can we can execute something, either it be trades or unrestricted free agency or the waivers. I mean, a college draft, all the different mechanisms of acquiring players. Couple more. Have your have your, have your feelings on your backup quarterback situation changed since we talked to you at the combine? Uh, what were my feelings? Uh, you seem comfortable with Drew Stanton being number two. I still stand by that. Okay. John, with uh, hey, John, trading, John, with trading Kevin Zeitler, uh, what's your comfort and uh, level and confidence in uh, Austin Corbett uh, stepping into that role? Well, you know, the organization selected Austin Corbett thirty third overall for a reason because uh, we feel he's a good football player. Um, by by no means do you anoint him right now, but what you do is you again you be, go into training camp and you compete, 
And then at the end of the day, I'm sure Freddie's going to put the five best offensive linemen out there on the field. But, you know, you know, Kevin, I mean, uh, Austin's done a really nice job. John, how much of a factor was Adam Henry being on the staff and doing your preparation on, on Odell? Well, it, it helps to have his college uh, position coach on your staff. So that helped. Have you, uh, in terms of, I know you're kind of in, terms of, in the bunker there a little bit. Have you caught wind of the excitement that this trade generated in the city? Actually, Pat, what I, I, the, the excitement I was trying to generate was go home and make sure that uh, Jack and Catherine could see their father before they went to bed. So that's what I was doing, racing home to see them. Did you really, did you really complete this thing in a pizza, when you were ordering pizza? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> All right, that's the answer. With uh, the fact you were coordinating your defense and acquisitions with uh, Greg Williams at this time last year, now you're doing it with Steve Wilkes. Uh, um, what have those conversations been like in terms of adding uh, key guys like uh, Richardson and, uh, and Vernon uh, in conversations uh, with Wilkes? Um, I, I've thoroughly enjoyed kind of uh, developing a relationship with Steve Wilkes. And uh, I think we're, we as an organization are very lucky to have a man of – of his caliber uh, on our coaching staff. And I just, every time we sit and talk, I, I, I learn more every time I sit and talk with him. I think he is a fine man. Hey, John, do you feel like you still have a need at starting, at starting linebacker after cutting Jamie Collins? And if so, how do you go about filling that? I'm sorry, say that one more time, please. Do you, still, do you feel like you have a need at starting linebacker now that Jamie Collins isn't here? And how do you go about filling that? I think uh, Jannard Avery is, uh, you know, I think Jannard Avery played at a really uh, nice level last year. And um, but again, what you're going to do is, you know, you explore every opportunity. If a good player comes about, uh, you'll see. You again try to add competition because again, you can't have enough uh, competition at all spots, especially you know, and even at the linebacker spot. That, that's what I love about training camp. All right, Gary. John, John when you hear... Go ahead. Okay, when, uh, you know, you, you start reading things that are coming out of New York and, you you know, there's stories that Odell was a pain in the ass and, uh, you know, just hard to deal with and all of that kind of stuff. And you know Dave Gettleman very well. Do you think that, um, do you think that this was just a situation where maybe Odell needed a change of scenery, he needed to get with a quarterback that could get him the football, uh, and that, you know, those kinds of problems will, will dissolve once he's here? I know Odell is very passionate. I know he is competitive, and I know he can help this football team. And if you can get a chance to acquire a guy like that, you know what, take a shot at it and see if, you know, and, and, and we acquired him.